and welcome to How to Deal When the Shit Gets Real podcast. I'm Rietta. And I'm Connie. And today we are here with firefighter Dan. So Dan, how do you deal when shit gets real and just tell our listeners about yourself? Hi, I'm Dan Corolla. I'm a 16 and a half year veteran of the fire service. I've been uh, ENT since I started long ago. I've been a 12 year medic. I also am a carpenter when I'm not a fireman, so I'm a jack of all <laughs> trades and master of none. No, I love it. I'm I'm a jack too, so I love when I meet a fellow jack. I'm like, I'm not the only one who's crazy and tries to do a bunch of projects at once. <laughs> My wife will tell you that. When you're a jack of all trades uh, making stuff, like what are the projects that you gravitate towards? Custom furniture, tables. I do a lot of trim to pay the bills for new tools that I want to buy or do repairs around the house. An Instagram account with all my stuff that I do. It's quite fun. My great grandfather was a master carpenter in Virginia. And so was my, his son was my uncle Ed, my dad and my uncle taught me a lot of stuff. And then I was always in the wood shop from when I was seven on up. So I just, I'll look at something and I'll try to build it. He made some cabinets last time I was home, really pretty cabinets. And uh, you were making cutting boards for a while too, weren't you? Yeah, I actually uh, apprenticed under a cabinet maker, uh, uh, Dustin, one of the Rietta's friends from my high school. Oh, I worked really? under him for uh, a year. It was a small scale cabinet shop. So I learned how to build traditional cabinets. I uh, got to use really expensive CNC. I got a couple of videos on YouTube of me running the machine there. It was fun. So uh, not only was he my friend, that was my first boyfriend ever was Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> Taking it back. Actually, when I was cleaning out my closet the other day, I found he used to be in a band and I found his CD and I sent it to him and he was like, holy shit, that's worth a nickel. Hang on. To that. <laughs> <laughs> so my biggest question for you, Dan, because I've wondered this with the pandemic and everything that's been happening, how has that changed how you guys are as like firemen and EMTs? Has it gotten crazier? Is it better? Worse? Oh, it's it sucked at the beginning. Mm-hmm. I wrote some notes down, but I did not like. Uh, it was a wild <laughs> west at the beginning. Yeah, because. It was no one knew what to do they go all right switch out your n95 after every call that lasted half a shift at least from what i recall so we would have to wear our n95 the same one up to three shifts because we work 24 hours or if you're if you work 72 straight you toss it out but we would toss it out if we had someone who we suspected covid then we're, we're deconning the ambulance even w- more than what we usually do. So wiping like cavi wiping, uh, 10% bleach solution. And then it's whatever this COVID spray. So the initial COVID spray would start eating paint and, oh. on a lot of stuff. It was very wow. toxic. Jesus. It was very, yes. yeah. And then we'd be spraying some of this stuff around the station. And it was just like, it smelled like napalm. Oh my god! Like twenty four seven, we had to wear a mask all the time in the station. Some of us still do, but we're confined. You know, we're confined all the time with each other. So as long as we're doing social distancing, that's that's fine. Some guys still won't eat at the same table. They want to be far apart. Well, our stations are kind of small, and some so one has a training room, so you're able to. We each have, eat at four corners of the room, and that's what they do. That's fine. Me, personally, if I'm going to get sick, I'm going to get sick, but I'm not going to keep away yeah. from someone when I'm eating, even though we can't social distance when we're sleeping. So, yeah. yeah. Aren't you guys kind of always on the same shift together? Isn't it usually the same group of guys or no? Yes. So we, we're a full, I'm a, at a union fire department, so it's the same 60 guys all the time and ladies we got four now i believe four or five uh so the same general people so this each guys on the shift know how each other work and sometimes we'll have off shift or some different shift but everyone generally knows how each other works and all that so which is nice coming from a volunteer 
department, you never know who you're going to get on calls or how they were going to work. So it's a little bit nicer in that aspect that uh, you know who's sick and who isn't. You know, we're following we're following our protocols, like we're doing temp checks, and that is a whole nother ballpark because it takes 14 days to uh, to manifest. So a lot of people were probably asymptomatic spreading the virus at work, you know, we didn't, you can't really tell. So it was a flawed system for first responders and nurses and docs when we're dealing with all this, because we're not showing any symptoms, but we could be spreading it around even worse, Mm -hmm. even though we're wearing our PPE. We always, they wanted us to always wear masks, but which is kind of hard because we're in the South suburb of Chicago, but we burn quite a bit, not as much as we used to when I first got hired, but We have a lot of calls, so it's kind of hard to keep our mask on with us. You know, you see smoke coming. You go, oh, I left my face mask in the rig. What am I going to do? A lot of times I would just keep going to the fire and and do what I'm supposed to. And I'll I'll, uh, run back afterwards and grab a a surgical mask at the the least uh, for when I wasn't wearing my uh, face piece. Don't you have like a what do you call it? Like a smoke mask anyway that you guys wear as firemen? Yeah. 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 That's uh yeah. We have a SBA face piece that we wear that uh, will help for the smoke and all that, but you only wear it when you're going inside in smoky conditions, uh, really yeah. hot conditions. Uh, that will help protect your eyeballs and everything. But <laughs> I can't imagine that you would want to wear uh, like a PPE underneath that thing though. I can't imagine that would work very well. No, no. They said we didn't have to, but they want us to have it in our gear you know, I would have it in my gear, then I could pull it out afterwards, and it's mm-hmm. soaked to high heaven because uh, you're in water and oh, yeah. nasty soot stained. You know. Yeah. It's 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 not realistic. Uh, a lot of us went to neck gaiters, or we'll just use our Nomex and put it over our nose. And half time, that's that's what I do. Yeah, my husband wears the neck gaiters as well. And he's like, well, you know, they have the thing to like, you know, you always have to like cover your face. He's like, and they don't even realize that the neck gaiters that they said are okay will spread your germs more. Like if he coughed in a neck gaiter, your germs will go spread further, apparently, or yeah. supposedly. I don't really know, yeah, but you're... I thought it was funny. I was like, okay. Yeah, yours, uh, I believe the rating is you shouldn't be able to blow out a candle or something. I don't know. Something like but, that, uh, yeah. Yeah, surgical mask at the least is what they say. Yeah, and the military is using, obviously, the neck gaiters, too, because that's what they're issued. But Kyle's neck gaiter is pretty pretty damn thick. Yeah, and yeah, Tom just uh, has the ones from Amazon. Excuse me. It's as thin as a t-shirt, so. Oh, no. His, yeah, I, this is why I don't use Kyle's because I was going to use it for a while because I like it better. I don't know. It just, there's something about it. But here in Hawaii, it's too freaking hot for that. <laughs> I, I'll probably have to find out what, uh, how thick that is. See if I can get me one for, uh, for, uh, winter time. Yeah. So, keep it nice and warm. <laughs> it would absolutely keep you warm. I think it's made out of the, what do they call it? The frog gear or whatever. Well, there's a frog gear oh, one, yeah. and, and then I think there's a, a thicker, even one that's better than that, because the frog gear really isn't all that thick. But the he's got one that I borrowed, and I was like, this, like my neck was sweating. I'm like, I can't do this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, running calls wasn't too bad. It just sucked because, like, you get a COVID, you got to decon the ambulance, then you get back, then you strip naked, wear down your underwear, and then you run to the showers, shower up and then put new clothes on, take your clothes, go wash it, then decon your driving stuff, all your PPE. It was, it was a, it was a nightmare. I went through like a couple of pants. Some guys oh, yeah. bought a lot of t-shirts and stuff because they accidentally put some bleach in there, you know? Oh my gosh. So Whoops. I was washing my bedding pretty much every shift. I was fortunate. I got promoted to engineer around July time. So I didn't, I wasn't a full-time ambulance guy that, that long in the pandemic. So from February to July, I wasn't full-time on the ambulance, but we still run a fair amount of calls 
mm-hmm. with the ambulance now. I would imagine that would be the worst part, like being in the ambulance and responding to calls, because then you have to worry every time you bring somebody into the ambulance if they have COVID or not. Oh, yeah, we had to, like, we clean the window between the cab and that, or if it had a seal, uh, you're able, like, a little window to seal it off, bringing our bags in to the houses. If, from the dispatcher, it sounds like a COVID thing. We didn't really bring our bags there. One person went in the house, the other one stood by with the cot, helped them as they could, and to, to risk only one person getting contaminated. So uh, we had all the PPE. It just, uh, there were some calls. I We had to just get in there, and both of us had to get decontaminated because they were going down the tubes. Yeah, yeah. see, and that's never fun because you guys already have a lot of protocol that you follow that you have to worry about, and then you're adding more protocol on top of it. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I know. It all depends on the person too, because you know, you know, you go to the house that you've been going to for the last ten years. Normal routine person that always calls for BS. Then you take them to the hospital for COVID, and you go back to the same house for someone else, and you go, "We're so and so. How's she doing? Oh, uh, she didn't make it. She died." You know, it it was a awakening to me because I didn't think it was that bigger deal initially at first but it it was kind of surreal seeing like the people I enjoyed taking to the hospital or they've always been nice that it it just uh they're no longer around so you have had some close contact with people that have had COVID and had passed away due to COVID oh yeah they would they would track us or whatever they wouldn't the, the front office would track it. The hospital would track it, but they weren't always good about telling everybody. So yeah. you took a COVID person. It was basically monitor yourself for symptoms all the time. And if you have symptoms and all that, uh, you call you call in saying I got COVID symptoms, and then you got to go get tested, and then uh, you got to wait till the COVID test comes back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's an utter nightmare. That's the same thing um, the military was doing. If you had symptoms, you know, you had to call in, you had to go get tested, and then they weren't allowed to come in until the test came back negative because they have it's the same. It's kind of the same concept of you guys. There's you know a hundred plus guys that are always around each other, close contact every day. So if one person one. got it, it was going to go around quick. Yep. Yeah. Uh, also, there's only so much you can do. Yeah, there is only so much you can do, though. That is true. So I also heard from my brother that, and I don't know if your area was like that, they were also getting, like, in the beginning, crazy amount of calls, like, way more than normal. And it was a lot of people like, I have COVID. And they really, like, not all of them, but, like, some of them, it was like, no, you don't. Or, like, they would get, um, you know, because of the quarantine, they would get like cabin oh. fever and like crazy stuff was like my brother was like it's insane actually we did we did about six about 70 around 70 calls less than last year um oh, for, really? for calls still quite a bit we're in like around 8200 calls for 17 mm-hmm. guys every day and two covering two towns during the the thing uh the doctors of the area enacted a thing where we can refuse to take stable COVID paid people. So we can say, mm-hmm. yeah, you're not going to the hospital. All your vitals are stable. There's no need. We take all your vitals. There's no, and we would call and confirm with the hospital. They approve us refusing that transport. Oh, that's I don't cool. The, yeah, there's a lot of people. And a lot of people, when you talk to them, you want to go to the hospital? No. Uh, we took more drunks to the hospital than we did like actual real COVID cases. That's funny. Um, <laughs> that actually doesn't surprise me because when my dad was a police yeah. officer over there, that's pretty much a lot of what he dealt with was homeless and drunk. My yeah. record is four on one day. So the same wow. person. Oh, the same, same person? person? <laughs> oh my <laughs> goodness. What was he doing? Was he just getting back out of the hospital and just started drinking again? And then it was just a vicious oh, circle? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. They they would kick them out or they were fully loaded. So 
But he would just sit in the uh, front lobby and then he would just walk out. So. Oh my! Oh my goodness! That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> the hospitals were overloaded, um, so we did our best not to Can overload them. If a person did, did, uh, during that time, we use our best discretion. We don't ever talk anyone out, but we like suggest them. And during the COVID time, if they absolutely need to go to the hospital, we'll take you no problem. But is this something that you can call your personal doctor for or your clinic? Yeah. And, and they had all those that. virtual visits. Go yeah. online and exactly. schedule a virtual visit. It's fine. It yeah. works just exactly. as well. Exactly. Some people look down on it, but, you know, why overload a hospital? Like, mm-hmm. If you got a stubbed toe, you don't really need to go in the ER anyway, <laughs> even though we're still going to take you because you stubbed your toe for the 15th time this month. <laughs> man and i don't know a lot of people who want to um pay for that ambulance ride for a stub toe yeah me either nice. uh, medicaid so i'm sure seeing all these people sometimes probably kind of weighs on you and gets depressing or hard to deal with how do you deal with that i i try not to think about it um a lot of times i i used to drink a lot and then once I met my wife, she told me I can't do that anymore. Um, <laughs> Sounds like me. <laughs> I've been telling her, I'm like, you need to chill. <laughs> chill with the drinking, my friend. Yeah, I don't really drink that much anymore. I probably, ha- I switched to seltzers from beer. So mm. I probably have one a week, if that. I do woodworking or play video games. And now my new hobby is uh, playing with my uh, my daughter. Uh, so so most of the most of the time I would work and that that uh that allows me to forget about work which I like because yeah. I've been doing it for so many years uh working on the rural area I got to see a lot of a lot of bad accidents and su- suicides are pretty nasty mm-hmm. even in the area where I work it can be difficult certain areas of town like that girl got stabbed 30 times there. He goes, oh, he goes, I was here for a car family caught on fire. You know, I drive a certain way, so I don't have to remember some yeah. of the stuff. That's the negative about working in town. But the good part about in town is I know if I call, ever call 911, I know who's coming. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and, I could, and I can trust them. It's very hard with, to see what the new guy, the younger guys are because the younger millennials are a little bit softer when we were growing up because sometimes you don't know how they can handle or they're just going straight to drinking which is a typical fireman mentality which Mm -hmm. it has its uses which we will do occasionally when it's a screwed up call like hey we're meeting at this bar at eight o'clock because we get off in the morning because we know the the bar will open up for us, and like we're gonna go sit down, relax, and talk about shit. And yeah. that's I I like to watch out because uh, I ran into a lot of the pitfalls of taking it to heart early on, seeing all all these all the death and like messed up situations. Like it's personal, but after a while, I learned to like well. There's nothing that I did to them, and you got to learn to compartmentalize to where you weren't the one to do it. You were just there to help them, and they called you for the help. And not everyone can understand that, and it's yeah. kind of hard to talk to my my wife, my family about stuff like that. Some of my friends can they like they're just like, oh, that's messed up. They'll listen. They go, that, he goes, I don't know what to tell you. I go. He goes, well, I'm just telling you to talk. So he goes, you don't really need to give me advice. It just, when I, when I want to rant or complain about something, I just want you to listen. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, a lot of times I don't need someone to do something about it. But I have a core group of guys that when I'm feeling down, which is every so often the, uh, the dough will go have coffee or we'll, we'll talk on the phone. 
it's always good so, to have a, a support group that you can lean on. Cause I think that is one of the most important things is that you have somebody that you, like you said, you just need somebody to listen. A lot of times that's all we really need. Yeah. Well, it's, it, we've been the last three years, we've been harping on support groups more and more at work. I think since like 2014 suicides for us have gone or have been more in total versus line of duty deaths. Wow. And for every, it is 18 firemen committing suicides for every 100,000 population. So, and only only a fraction of the suicides are being reported. So, it's really it's heartbreaking. Crazy. Yeah, that's heartbreaking. It, um, it, it, it is, and I don't, I like, I always feel down and, and on some days, and, you know, I don't want to be a statistic. You know, so I always mm-hmm. try to, what can I do to correct it? And you try to do that and, that and all your coworkers will know when you're not feeling well, your normal self, because they'll, they'll come up. Most of the guys, even though if they don't like you, they'll, mm-hmm. they'll make sure you're doing okay. Well, that's always good. And uh, you found, you've now found positive ways to immerse yourself in things. So you aren't yes. so lost in that craziness it's very easy to get lost and a lot of guys will choose to get lost or they'll get to a crutch like drinking mm-hmm. and a lot and that's the hard part is it's fine like working out doing something other than firefighting in the ems service i always recommend do something different from what you're doing that's causing you that stress do something that's totally different it's going to cause skill. you Exactly. I'm sure a lot of people were doing that with the quarantine. Oh, hell yeah. So Mm -hmm. speaking of things that get your mind off of being a firefighter and dealing with that stress, I hear you like to cook. So yes, I do. What is your favorite thing to cook? And then what would also, what would your last meal be? I, it's, it's tied on my favorite thing. I've been working on my rib recipe for about 10 years and now I, we have smokers at work I do smoke it for like about seven hours but I also make jambalaya during Lent a lot Ooh, the yeah. shrimp's on sale so I make like a lot of jambalaya in a traditional way and a lot of guys love it so it's kind of a tie but I've been getting pretty good with the ribs where you can just yank on the bone oh I love come that out. Oh, I love a good set of ribs. I haven't had ribs in forever. That sounds amazing. Yep. And then my last meal would be a brisket, hands down. Hell yeah. But I would have to make it. Delicious. What would you have with the brisket? Like, what would you be your, like, your sides and your drink and everything? Oh, cornbread, coleslaw, and a diet Mac and Coke. cheese. Sorry. I love mac and cheese. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Mac and cheese. <laughs> and I just think of brisket. I'm like, mac and cheese. It has to be yeah, homemade mac and cheese. Yeah, darn homemade dude. And- yeah, and you need that the homemade cornbread or even like the homemade jalapeno cornbread. Mm-mm. Full on southern meal. I'm surprised you didn't say something Italian, honestly. You do look Italian. He is Italian. I am. That's what I thought. <laughs> Especially with that the name last name ending in O, like Italian, probably. Well, one of my wife's favorite dishes is Italian. So that she likes that I make. So, what's the dish? What's her favorite dish that you make that's Italian? It's it's tied. It's chicken marsala or chicken parm. Ooh, both good. Both very good. Mm-hmm. I love a good chicken parm. You're I gonna have to um parm. any anything parm. I'm I'm down. It's fine. <laughs> you're gonna have to make it for uh for Kyle Dan because uh he he's not Italian but he that's his favorite food is Italian. Well, yeah, it's delicious. Carbs, yum. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're gonna we're gonna have re- homemade raviolis for Easter this weekend. So, ooh, ooh send me send me pictures. <laughs> we'll do. You know what? Actually, we're gonna have for Easter. Uh, we ordered uh, the Portillo's Italian beef, and it's getting delivered. I think on Friday. So, uh, yum. Do they even uh, have Portillo's on my own? It's getting delivered dry ice and, and they do two day shipping or whatever and it'll come straight from Chicago. I love it. Delicious. Hundred dollars later. 
Yep. It actually wasn't too bad because we got two pounds of Italian beef, all the stuff, you know, the jardinera, the bread and everything, Illuminati's deep dish pizza, and a Portillo's chocolate cake for like 120 Yum. Oh, uh, that's, that's not bad. No, it wasn't that bad at all. So totally worth it. I'm going over to your house for Easter. <laughs> <laughs> All You'll be here in line. May. I know, yeah, Dan, I'm excited. Dan and Kim need to come visit. I've been trying to convince them. I'm like, you guys say you need a vacation. I'm in the best vacation place possible. Yeah, I, I think you got to get that COVID shot to fly now. No. No? No, I'm going in May. All you have to do is get a negative COVID test. Oh, that's good. Yeah, mm-hmm. a negative COVID test. And it has to be, you have to know that it's negative before you get on the airplane. Yeah, you have to take it 72 hours before you leave. I mean, you can still come even actually if you don't do that, but you have, but then you'd have to quarantine for 10 days, which for most people, that's their entire vacation. So if you get the COVID yeah. test and it's negative, then you, you can skip all that. Which is how we're doing it. Well, I'm off for an entire month in October. So uh, our, vet, our vacation destination is not set in stone yet. Hawaii, here you come. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, October. Is that wait? No, Rachel's in se- is it September? September. Okay, no, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, October's okay. <laughs> we have three weddings this year. I'm trying to keep track. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah, the, the wedding season is going to be booming. Yeah, year. it is. Yeah. Hawaii just announced actually just this past week that they're allowing weddings to come back, and it can be you know a hundred people. Like they're not there's. They're not limiting it like they were. Wow. So fancy. <laughs> yeah, they were They were literally, what do you call it, picketing or, yeah, picketing because it's not writing. They were holding signs like asking for them to come back because everybody's struggling so hard because there hasn't been any weddings really. So a couple of days and later they released it. I went to a small wedding before Indiana shut down for one of my buddies. I, I think it was a 50 or maybe a hundred. What I think it's fifty. I mm-hmm. made the cut, and it was. <laughs> I actually liked it. Yeah, I, know, I, I I had I had a huge wedding. Unfortunately, you and guys did. There was a lot of people. Uh, how, how many yeah. is a lot of people? I'm just curious. I had around just under three hundred. Woo! Yeah. But I, My, people were doing shots of uh, Jaeger on a, through our martini luge. I still nice. get notifications on uh, um, on our anniversary. You guys, all the guys, pictures of them taking shots in the martini luge. I just remember so. all you guys like hanging out together, um, smoking cigars. Like everybody was loving Kyle too because he was in his blues. And I'm like, all the boys are being boys right now. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah, one boy. Someone was complaining. All that, weddings. Uh, they go. They go. You're. He goes. The smoke is coming in because we had a door open and it was freezing out. Yeah, it was freezing. And, <laughs> and, they, and they go. They go. He goes. It's cold. He goes. It's. It's one of my uh, groomsmen. He goes. Then shut the fucking door. <laughs> we all smoke cigars at weddings. That's what. Uh, yep. That's what we do for tradition. And. It's whatever. It's Indiana, so they don't really care about smoking laws, anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Once spring hits, I usually I'll have a cigar while I'm checking out the rig or doing uh, definitely cutting the grass and stuff at work. Yeah, there you go. The dream. So, how's it being a new a, a new dad? They just adopted. Well, I guess it's been a while now. It's just been a year or over a year now. Oh, uh, it's been over a year since we brought her home. Yeah, because you brought her um, home right before Christmas. What's no, her name? Uh, Alexis Jane. We named her after her birth father, and the middle name is my grandma. Oh, that's so sweet. So, yeah, so she has a connection to her birth father. We really have, uh, Kim has told me that uh, they've contacted her, or we have a Facebook page where they can see. So I, I assume it's really hard for them to deal with uh, giving up a child but they also did probably the, the best thing in the world for her because they probably they couldn't provide for her adequately and they chose me and Kim in November I think it was right before Thanksgiving yeah that's a great and holiday gift 
then like a couple weeks later, I'm going in the labor and oh, okay, we'll drive down to Memphis. She was born with a collapsed lung, so they uh, in Mississippi, yeah. so she, they had to fly her to Memphis uh, with Bonner. I'm sure most children's hospitals are awesome, but this one was really cool. Uh, they took great care of her. Um, it was a little heartbreaking trying to get to see her. We were yeah. there, I think, 24, 48 hours before we were able to see her because of oh. all the lawyer stuff. Yeah. Uh, and you get there, she's she's intubated and uh, vomiting. Uh, like, where's the suction tubing? I go and find the nurse. I go, can you suction her? Because otherwise I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. it's very frustrating as a parent uh, and as a medic. You know, I'm like, uh, yeah, we need you're to suction her. So she, yeah. Yeah, we need to suction her so she doesn't aspirate. But the next day we came in, we went to sleep. We came in at like 7.30 and she was off the vent. They took her off the vent right before we came. Uh, they put her on CPAP. Then as it progressed, we got to see her lung, uh, the cervix that worked in you know, through the x-ray. So it was really cool as the cells were activating. You got to see the lung opening up, opening up. And it was really neat. I had to go wow. back to work. So my wife was there till January, being in the hospital all the time with her. So she got a lot of good bonding time. She, mm-hmm. she knew how to feed the kid really good. Uh, that was a struggle because she would stop breathing uh, oh, no. while she's being fed. Yeah. So I got some gray hairs on my mustache from her. <laughs> uh, she was premature, right? She wasn't supposed to come until like, yeah. what, February? January. Yeah. Uh, she wasn't supposed to come like January fifteenth, I think. Yeah, and she I came planned before... to be off for like two weeks. Yeah, and she came before Christmas, right? So it was a good month early. Yeah, it was a couple weeks early, so it was hard being away from wife and and Lexi. My wife enjoyed the the nice weather Memphis had to offer. Yeah, you know, so I already <laughs> know. I already know when I retire, we're moving. We're moving in that general area because. I would prefer not to have to deal with snow that uh, mm-hmm. like we get up here. Yeah. It was, yep. it was difficult. I tried to talk to her all the time. It was always frustrating because you're hearing alarms go off, like she'd stop breathing or she'd start back breathing. So oh it was a gosh. battle to get her. It's stressful. It was very stressful. Yeah. And then you get her home and you have to do it without the bells and whistles. Yeah. And that's where the Ala came into play. That relieved me big time because I lose the, the pul- I have OLED, if you don't know what it is, it's a pulse ox sensor. So it's, um, it, it uh, will monitor the oxygen saturation and the pulse of mm-hmm. uh, the baby. So if there's something's aloof or something, it'll, the alarm will go off on your phone that something's wrong. Well, that's pretty um, cool. <clears throat> I mean, it sucks that you had to use it, but at least you had that tool so that you didn't worry as much. Yeah, I think a lot of people use it. Uh, we still use the camera from uh, Nanny Cam to check on her when she's sleeping or if she wakes up in the middle of the night. So getting up, I'll just open up my phone and go, what, what is she doing? <laughs> and usually she's eating the blanket or something, you know. <laughs> she she's at that age where she's walking and she's teething and Aww. she was a small little thing she's like four pounds eight ounces and now she's like 21 pounds with a big old head she's, <laughs> she's come a long way and connie actually i made oh, a comment yeah. about you the other day because um she doesn't have a lot of hair so Thanks. it just reminds it just reminds me of you not as bad as you connie was bald until she was like oh two. i was so no I was three yeah <laughs> i was real bald yeah, uh, my cousin's daughter, Ava, was like that, but they said it was really fine blonde hair. You can really tell her hair's coming in, and it's just very sparse. But I have I have a lot to say that it's probably because her being a preemie. Mm-hmm. So it, it was, uh, it, we have a lot of hassles, you know, like we the co- during this COVID, it was like, well, we can't bring her out anywhere. Like I would, I would I would uh, shower at work and then shower when I get here uh, uh, before I would touch the baby. Yeah, yeah, just uh, to be extra it, careful. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's healthy as a horse now because I'm pretty sure Good. her and the dog share toys. I'm all <laughs> That's good. That's why all the kids are healthy, man, because they do the gross shit. My friend's little boy just the other day, we were out. The kids were all out on the playground. He literally pulled the piece of gum off the playground and stuck it in his mouth. And we were like, ew, ew, ew. <laughs> and we're like, and he is immune to everything and this is, now. <laughs> right. And this is why kids don't get COVID. <laughs> She's going to say five second rule. <laughs> yep. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she's going in the 10 second roll, and then sometimes you have to go 15 second roll, depending on what it is. <laughs> and how clean your floor is, and what floor it is. Mm. Oh, not in the house. Yeah, because it automatically has white Dog hair? shepherd hair. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I seriously think there's more lint, more dog hair in my lint out of the dryer than it's an actual lint oh yeah that <laughs> happens to me too depending on what i'm washing mm-hmm. washing then drying that's, obviously that's everything mm-hmm. so yeah it's been fun but you know like going through the adoption process in the covid is horrible yeah uh, tell us about it so like we met right before the shutdown we mm-hmm. uh we got to go to the show uh the family court in chicago we did that. They gave us a nice little uh, beanie baby duck. The judge had like beanie babies for the parents and the kids. Uh, so it was, he was really cool. And then um, we did that. He said, all right, then we have the, our social worker had to meet with us three times and then see how we're caring for the kid and all that. Mm-hmm. And then once that's done, she files the paperwork and then all the shutdowns happen. Oh my um, gosh. So it delayed it delayed it, uh, like a couple, I would say two to a, two weeks to a month when we, when the, the process was completed. And wow. so it was like mid July that we got it. We got full custody. Then comes trying to get her amended birth certificate. I think we got it maybe in November. And we just got her social security card couple weeks ago wow so which makes it difficult you know like um not like it like for tax purposes you know mm-hmm. that was that it, it delayed that and she uh, adding her to my pension mm-hmm. um changing the name at the doctor it was, it was just difficult because that was the last steps in the process then we didn't have to deal with anything ever again you know there's like this is she's ours yeah um yeah. it's very difficult like they go why is her name this and not the same like everyone always looks at it funny and goes why does she look blonde and you guys are both brown hair and brown eyes so oh, we've got a couple yeah and we get a couple questions but uh sometimes it's good otherwise she goes oh she's gonna be a boy killer and i said yeah <laughs> yeah, she's going to be because she's blonde hair, blue eyes, and always has a smile. She's been a good baby. I think we've been lucky. We've been blessed because ever since she graduated to the crib, she sleeps through the night. That's amazing. Yeah. My mom yeah. actually made a comment when you guys came over that she was a really good baby. She's like, she didn't cry once when she was here. It was she's so cute. Yeah, we take her. We take her out eating all the time. Generally good unless she's tired and teething. She's I a good baby. Too. <laughs> if I was teething, yeah, I'd like, be crabby. We get so many comments when we take her out to eat that uh that Judy goes, We didn't even know she was here. And he goes, I go You're welcome. Thank God for <laughs> Yeah. Thank God for YouTube kids or Disney Plus. Yeah. I'll either just put that up and I go, I don't care if I get looked at, but she's being entertained. She's gonna be 16 months next week or so. So she she's in that mode like she just needs something to look at. She she'll be good, or you just feed her rice puffs and she'll be happy. There you Aww. go. Um, I yeah, I don't want to bring the bit, her out all the time, but if it's a decent place where it's not gonna be too loud, where she's gonna get freaked out by the loudness of it. I'll take mm-hmm. her. You know, 
she gets more experienced at different things and I want to try to show her as much as I can when she's young that way she knows how to act as she gets older absolutely so if you could have any superpower what would it be (laughs) I would have uh the advanced healing like Wolverine Ooh, good one I like it. Would you have the claws too, or just the healing? I mean, the claws are pretty uh, cool. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> that could also be that, dangerous, uh, though, with a baby. So that's true. Well, I would do the claws if I could. Yeah, because I mean, but... Wolverine, he has complete control over the claws. He true. doesn't just have them out all the time. That would make a lot of things really uncomfortable. I feel like it would have to, you'd have to have the claws because, like, part of his regenerating part is like the stuff that's in his bones. So I feel like that would all just go, go together. together. Yeah. 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 I would definitely do that. I like that it. That way that's I can a... scare people at work. <laughs> <laughs> I need an ambulance. Just kidding. Oh my god. You're not going. <laughs> Don't call back for 24 hours. <laughs> Deadpool's yeah, got fun. the the regenerative powers too, but he literally grows from like a baby all the way up again. He doesn't just he doesn't just heal. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait till the third one comes out. Me either. Same. It's pretty good. It's been uh, fun. Uh, doing this with you thank ladies. you for coming and uh, yeah. sharing with thank us thank you i appreciate the opportunity so this is how to deal when shit gets real make sure you follow us on all of our platforms make sure you listen every friday and email us with any questions or if you want to be a guest